Hey guys, today is Thursday the 7th, and it is the day that I went to the neurosurgeon for um, the specialist appointment. Um, and I told you guys that I was going to give you an update when I went, and I did leave something on the community tab, but I um, told you to come back today for, I guess, better explanation, more ex information, I don't know. But while I'm talking to you, I'm going to be, I can't, I'm going to be folding these. I washed two loads of clothes, dried them, and I need to get them folded. Um, Jeff and I had a load and then Noah had a load, so that's why it's two loads. Um, so, let go. Noah has Velcro on his pockets. On his, his carpenter pants. They're not jeans. So I can't call them carpenter jeans. But they're breeches. Anyway. I went to the doctor. And he. They did some testing. Like reflex testi tests. And things like strength tests. Stuff like that and um, talked to me about how long this has been going on, what all has been going on, all those types of things. He looked at my x-rays, MRI, all that stuff. And he gave me two choices. One, let it stay like it is, stay in pain forever, possibly get worse. Or two, have surgery. I knew that's what he was going to say. I knew it before I even went in because I actually have gone through a similar thing with my cervical spine. This scar right here, that one. A lot of people think it's from a thyroid surgery. It's not. I've never had a thyroid surgery. I do have hypothyroidism, but I've never had a thyroid surgery. Um, that is from having a well, technically two cervical fusions at the same time. Back in 2014, um, which I've been saying it was like seven or eight years ago, it was nine years ago when I had the initial surgery. It was eight years ago when I had the plate removed. Anyway, I had a, the fusion between C4 and 5 and C6 and 7 or no. Was it? I don't know. I, I I could tell. Maybe I'll remember to put it on the screen, but I've got it written down, and I could tell you. But it's um, cervical spine fusion. Is it four and five and six and seven? I want to say that's it. I could be wrong, because right now my brain is really mush. It's a mess. Um, anyway, I knew that that was going to be my options because, one, I've gone through it with the fact that I have done everything that I was told to do to try to prevent surgery. I've done physical therapy. I've done medication. I've taken it easy. I've done the exercises. I've done everything that I was told. I have gone through all sorts of tests. I've gone through all sorts of things. But the reason why I knew he was going to say, leave it like it is and live in pain, possibly get worse, or have surgery is because I have experienced the numbness. I have experienced the tingling and burning and feeling like needles stabbing but the other time oh goodness it was my left arm not my left leg this time it's my leg because it's pressing on the sciatic nerve um so I knew what he was going to say before I went in but just because I knew what he was going to say didn't make it easier I seriously have fought crying the whole entire day it's now 220 and I saw him at about 10.40 or so. 
ten thirty, ten forty, something like that. Um, so yeah, I have to have a discectomy, a dis dis discectomy. I don't know how to say it. Um, what is it's a minimally invasive surgery, but it still has risks. One risk is bleeding, another is infection, another is nerve damage, um, there's also the risk of um, spinal liquid, spinal fluid leakage, uh, let's see, well it just, you know, normal surgical risks that you encounter, so there are risks, but there's one thing that I was kind of nervous about that there's not a risk that I am very grateful for. Um, paralysis is not a risk. I was very nervous about that. But the area where I have the issue is below where my, um, oh goodness, my spinal cord is. Uh, so he won't be anywhere near that. Um, it's about a one inch to one and a half inch incision. He goes in with like a camera and like laparoscopically, I guess is what it is. He goes in, he snips off the part of the disc that's herniated, cleans me up, sews me up, and sends me on my happy way. That's pretty much it. That's the short and simple version of it. Um, I'll try to remember to leave a link down below of maybe some different things explaining it but he told me if I choose the surgery which Jeff has pretty much already told me I'm having it because he's tired of seeing me no that's not the right way to say it he doesn't want to keep seeing me in pain and this is um a good way to stop that because then there won't be any any there won't be anything pressing on that nerve anymore and um, it has a very good success rate the doctor that I saw today has a very good track record he has a very successful practice he has a very high success rate um, he's been around for years and years um like he's not super old but he's been he knows his business and this is where that i chose to go because this is where my doctor that i used to see my other neurosurgeon used to practice my neurosurgeon had to retire because of his own health but anyway this doctor was there back whenever I used to go there um, back in 2014, nine years ago. So, um, anyways, he has a very good success rate, a very good track record, so that's why I chose to go there. And just like any surgery, you know, I'm nervous. But I don't, I don't really know how I feel yet. Honestly, don't know. But, um, if I have the surgery, I will have to, um, like what I'm doing right now, I really won't be able to do it. I will not be able to do any lifting, pulling, twisting I won't be able to do this at all like not even twist to get something off the table over here or twist over here to get the clothes out um, I will have to move my whole entire body to turn towards something I cannot twist at all for two months because that's what he says even though some of the things I read has a shorter amount of time I would rather go by his because 
reading things online could be wrong. Not only not only that, but he wants me to be super careful for longer, so that makes me feel a little bit better. But um, he uh, for two months I won't be able to lift, I won't be able to twist, I won't be able to do lots and lots of things. But Jeff is trying to find out if he can take off of work with his FMLA um, family medical leave. He's trying to find out if he can do that so that he can be home with me. I do have Noah. Anytime that Jeff's not home, Noah will be here. He can help me for that two months. So, I have help. I have family, probably some family that could come up here and stay with me maybe. I don't know yet. Um... If I needed that, honestly, I don't really know how that part's going to work out. And um, before, when I had my surgery, I had a lot of restrictions then as well. Uh, and, and I was fine. I actually healed faster than my doctor expected because I followed his rules. I'm a very good rule follower when it comes to anything. Uh, I try to make sure that I do what a doctor tells me to do so that I heal faster and completely instead of harming myself more. But we don't know how it's going to be. One of my plans is um, I'm going to go ahead and probably make some freezer meals before the surgery. Make some freezer snacks maybe or something I probably won't really worry about that as much uh, just make freezer meals so Jeff or Noah can just throw something in the crock pot or in the oven or whatever and it'll be easier now both of them can cook but with Jeff having to work and Noah having his own things and all of that stuff I don't want them to have to worry about it as much so I'm thinking the freezer meals at least for the first couple of weeks, you know, and then after that, I'll be able to do things with help. Like I could, well, another thing is I'm, I, I'm not supposed to sit a lot, but I'm not supposed to stand a lot. So I need to, I need to be moving, but I just don't need to be moving the wrong way. But, um, what was I going to say? Whenever it comes time for like cooking and things like that, I can, y'all, cooking is something I really enjoy doing. And that's something that bothered me that whenever he said that I was not going to be able to do things, I'm like, wait a minute, how am I going to take care of my family, you know? But I will be able to do the things. It's just, we're going to have to figure out a way a system that will work where that I can be able maybe I'll get me a stool to sit on and um, we're gonna have to buy bar stools for the trailer anyway but I'll have to figure out some kind of system where that everything that I need Jeff or Noah will get it out for me and then it'll be there ready for me whenever it's time I do not plan on stopping my videos I plan on continuing them in some way I may not do every day I don't know yet but I can I, I can edit with my laptop and I do have you know a way that I can do that so I don't have to sit at my desk so that should be fine I can pre-record some things maybe I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not I really don't love doing that I can do just different things and not that I feel obligated to film but I enjoy talking to you guys so I enjoy like doing my filming this started out as this whole channel started as like to give me something to do after the kids finished school because I wasn't homeschooling anymore 
and for the last seven years that's what I've done I've enjoyed it and I, I'm not planning on stopping it so for that two months I will still do videos they may not be the exact same way they may be a little different it might be a bunch of me sitting around talking y'all I won't have to fold clothes yeah, that's terrible. I shouldn't feel that way. But I don't like folding clothes. I don't mind folding clothes, but I don't like folding clothes. I won't overdo it. I won't do anything that's going to harm me. Um, whenever I do have the surgery, I won't be doing anything like that. But um, I'm pretty sure that my normal doctor, he was like... Not trying to talk me out of the a surgery. I haven't talked to him since I went today. But he wasn't trying to talk me out of the surgery. But he wasn't trying to talk me into a surgery either. So. I feel like. Since this is going to be a minimally invasive. Outpatient. High success rate surgery. It's probably what's best for me. Because, let me move this. I feel like that fan is probably blowing and making weird noises. I'm, fi I'm finished with the clothes. But I, I just feel like it'd probably be the best thing for me. Even though it's super scary. And I don't want to do it. But I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how long that it's going to take to get the appointment. I don't know how long it's going to take for the insurance to do their stuff. I don't think that'll take much time at all. Because... All the proof is there. Um, I tried to take some pictures of the MRI images, but there was such a glare because I was taking a picture of a screen. It just didn't work. But you can see it herniated. You can see it sticking out there, hitting a nerve. And there's no doubt that it's happening. <laughs> I feel it. But, I will have a lot of restrictions. And I pretty much won't be able to do much of anything for the first two months. Then after that, I think it's pretty much just work my way back up to normal activities. And hopefully no more pain. Like I said, I've fought crying all day. And I don't really have a reason to cry other than I don't want to be right <laughs> it's just like whenever I I knew it was a herniated disc I didn't want to be right because you don't want to have that issue you know that's something that's not a good thing so I didn't want to be right about this I didn't want to be right about having to have surgery but I've done everything else that I know to do that's within my power. And I know that a lot of people would say, well, you should be praying about it. God can heal you. Yes, he can. But I do believe that sometimes God uses doctors to heal people. And he guides them where they need to go. And this is exactly why. That I did not choose to go to the other doctor that I had the appointment with. Because if I would have gone to him. He's not able to do surgery. So I would have had to go to somebody else. And I just didn't. I wanted to skip that. I wanted to go ahead and go to someone that I knew. Someone that I trusted. Someone that I felt confident was going to do the best for me. So, it'll be okay. Y'all know that I plan. Y'all know that I'm going to figure out things. I'm going to make it work for us. And Jeff and Noah have been helping a lot. And I know that some people have commented and said men can do housework. Men can do... I know that. I know that men can. But if they're working and things... Like if... Jeff is working sometimes 60 hours a week. I don't want him to come home and do my stuff. This is my job. And 
I have chosen for this to be my job. Now, if I was working outside of the home, we would be splitting the chores like we used to. But this is my job. And that is not coming from anyone but me. And he even says, I can do that. Like, whenever I say, why are you doing that? I can do it, you know. Well, I can do it too. <laughs> he, he'll get on to me about, you know, me saying, well, that's something I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, he'll say, well, I can do it too. It's my house too. <laughs> um, but I know that men can do housework. In fact, my husband, he can clean, he can cook, he can sew. Sometimes he can sew better than me because he, his brain works with the cutting parts <laughs> a lot better than mine does. And angles and things like that. So sometimes I go to him for advice for that. But... He can do all the things. So I'm not like saying he can't do it or he won't do it right. It's just that I feel like that's my my task that I'm supposed to do. But I also feel like right now with the situation, just like whenever he had surgery and he couldn't do things, it's okay that I did them for him. So it's okay for him to do things for me. So, like whenever he had surgery on his hand because of his trigger finger, I took out the trash for him. I did his chores, you know, that would be something he normally would do. Me and the kids did them. So it's not that I feel like men shouldn't or can't. It's that that's mine. <laughs> It's mine. <laughs> and it's something I... Like, cooking is something I really enjoy. Now, I love cooking with him. But... I don't know. It's like... It's my thing. Taking care of my family. It's my... Th I take... I get joy from it. Is my point. I get joy from feeding my family and taking care of them. I don't get joy from cleaning the toilet or folding clothes <laughs> and I don't get joy from mopping <laughs> but I do feel much better after it's done like these clothes are done now putting them away is easy <laughs> folding them is not hard but I don't enjoy it it goes by a lot faster when I'm talking to y'all though so Anyway, uh, if you have any questions that I may not have answered in this video about my back, go ahead and ask. If you are new, because I did get a lot of new ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if there's any gentlemen or not, but I, there's a lot of ladies that have commented that are, came from the collab that I did this past week, which was so fun. I enjoyed watching all the videos of everyone opening their stuff. It was so fun to watch the happiness. Um, anyway, if you guys don't know, I have been dealing with a herniated disc in my L5-S1 region <laughs> for years. But I didn't know it was actually herniated. It was, hold on, my camera's fixing to stop. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I didn't actually know it was herniated. It was just bulging. And it herniated sometime. I don't know when. But I've been dealing with a lot of pain for the last four or five months now. And going to the doctor, going to physical therapy, getting the test, doing all the things. It's been a long ride that I don't enjoy. And I'm in constant pain. Um... But, with medication, it's tolerate, tolerable. Yes, that's the right word. I can tolerate it. Um, I can handle the pain when I'm taking the medication. And I'm the type of person that does not like taking medication. So, I don't take much. So, not I don't have to take much for it to work for me. Which is great. And during the day, I'm only taking ibuprofen, which is prescription strength, but I am taking ibuprofen. And at night, I take a muscle relaxer and a 
higher strength pain reliever it's a prescription that um I could take those two during the day but they make me super sleepy and I just I can't sleep all the time I would feel very yucky so I just take that at night and I take the ibuprofen during the day and it makes it tolerable and I have learned some tips and tricks along the way with trial and error about how to make it less painful like when I go to the grocery store like I can walk around Walmart and I say like and um so much it drives me crazy but um yeah I just did it <laughs> anywho's I'm the type of person that does not love shopping I love going to thrift stores I love going to yard sales stuff like that but I don't like going shopping otherwise very much at all so let's just say I go to the grocery store I make a list I get in and out as quickly as possible I memorize the stores without even really trying so I can get in and out I remember where things are so and I even write my list a lot of the times by sections of the store so I can go and get out and go home so, the reason why I'm telling you this is because walking around the store used to be not a big deal, but now I can get maybe like, just let's just say the Walmart grocery section, just that part, I can walk halfway around the store and I'm already in very big pain. If I had an opportunity to sit down, I would feel better during those times, but there's not always that opportunity. Some of you and some of Jeff's friends at work have suggested I use the little buggy cart thingies that you drive. Y'all, I don't want to drive one of those things because I'm scared I'll run over something. <laughs> they never work right. I have heard so many people complain about them. I'm scared to do it and I just keep having this thought well what if somebody else needs it more so I don't use them I probably will after the surgery though if I go to the stores thankfully we have Walmart plus so I'll probably get in, be getting things delivered and um, that way I don't have to think about that so I will tell you more about my plans you will see what I'm doing um, I will let you know when the surgery is going to be. I will keep you updated. And um, I'm going to end up showing my personal items. <laughs> I'll try to keep y'all uh, up to date. Also, after I got back home, I put on my pajamas. Because I didn't want to wear clothes that were like regular clothes that were not comfortable. Even though they were comfortable, I just didn't want to wear those. I wanted to wear comfy cozy. Comfier. So, anyway. I say anyway a lot too, don't I? Is that a match? No. We have some, some lawn socks that we don't know where that... Noah's probably got his in his room somewhere. I don't know what happened to these two because they were here. They're mine. I don't know what happened to them. I guess the old washing machine ate them. I don't know. That happens to everyone, it seems. But anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I have made this video go so long. If you do have any questions about anything that I've talked about today, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And I will be glad to answer anything that I can. If you like this video, hit the like button. I probably already said that. I don't have a clue. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. Share this with a friend if you would like to as well. Subscribe if you haven't already and you would enjoy watching me be my weird self. I do all kinds of things. I also scratch myself at seams and cause my neck to be red. Not a good idea. I don't recommend it. I mean, it's not hurting. It just looks really, really weird. So, yeah. Thank you again for hanging out with me today. And remember... Don't take any wooden nickels and 
Be sweet.